Section 9.2 is on ellipses. Our first example, we want to put this in standard form. Identify the vertices, the foci, the center, and then make a sketch. First, I know this is going to be in ellipses because it has both x squared and y squared. Both of those are positive x squared and y squared. And they have different coefficients. One of them is positive 9x squared, and the other one, other one is positive 4y squared. So I know it's definitely going to be an ellipse when I sketch it. First thing I want to do is group the x's together and group the y's together. And let's move that constant of 37 to the other side. So just grouping them together, here's what I have. Now we're going to need to do completing the square twice, once with the x's, once with the y's. I can only do completing the square if it's 1x squared. So I'm going to have to factor that 9 out. So if I take the 9 out front, dividing 9x squared, I just get 1x squared, which is what I want. But it also has to come out of the negative 54. So dividing by 9, now it's minus 6x. It's going to become a trinomial, so I like to add an empty square. You can add an empty blank or just an empty space. And I'm going to do the same thing with the y's. It needs to factor out the 4. When I factor out the 4, I get y squared. When I factor out the 4, I get plus 10y. That's going to become a trinomial too but it'll be with a new number, a different number, so I like to use a different shape. You can do another blank space or a line. And remember it equaled negative 37 before, but I've added some stuff. I added a rectangle, an empty square, and it's inside a parentheses with a 9. So technically I added 9 square to the left, so I need to add 9 square to the right to keep it balanced. Same thing with a triangle. I added 4 triangle to the left, so I need to add 4 triangle to the right to keep it balanced. This is just the setup. I don't know what goes in those blanks until I do the next line. So bring down the 9. It becomes a perfect square, so both sides of your generic rectangle would match. They would both have to say x, and to figure out what else they say, I look at that negative 6x in the middle, and I take half of it, so minus 3, quantity squared. If you foiled that out or filled in the rectangle, then that empty square up above would end up being 3 squared, which is 9. So I fill a 9 in right above it, and I fill that same 9 in in the matching rectangle on the right-hand side. Same idea with the y's. Bring down the 4. The generic rectangle would say y, and to figure out what goes with it, I look at the middle term, plus 10y. So half of that, plus 5, quantity squared. When I squared that, I would get a 25 for that third term, which goes in the triangle on both the left and the right. So finishing this equation, it's going to equal negative 37 plus 9 times one, 9 is 81 plus 4 times 25 is 100. So it's going to equal 144. Now remember, standard form of an ellipse has to equal 1. And this equals 144 right now. So to fix that, I need to divide everything by 144. If I divide everything by 144, then it'll equal 1, and hopefully these other ones will reduce nicely. It just so happens that 9 goes into 144 16 times, so that leaves me with x minus 3 quantity squared, and now it's over 16, plus, because it's an ellipse, it also just so happens that 4 goes into 144 36 times, so that leaves me with y plus 5 quantity squared, now it's over 36, and it equals 1 like it's supposed to. So this is my standard form of an ellipse. Looking at my ellipse in standard form, I should be able to pull the center out of there. Notice it says quantity x minus 3. So zero product property, that gives me an x value of my center at positive 3. It says quantity y plus 5. So zero product property gives me a y value of negative 5. Also looking at the equation, I can see that the biggest denominator is under y, the 36. So that means that my major axis is going to be the y-axis. Once I know my major axes, I can also work on finding the foci. Remember we have a formula c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So my a squared is the major, the big number, 36 minus my b squared is the little one, the minor one, 16. So c squared is going to equal 20. 
square rooting both sides, I get that C equals, you can do a factor tree on 20, or you can know that 4 divides into 20, and the square root of 4 is 2, and I would have plus or minus 2 root 5 left. So C equals plus or minus 2 root 5. Okay, so trying to find the foci. We know that the major axis is the y-axis. So that means the x value isn't going to change. Your foci and your vertices slide up and down the major axes. So the x value is going to be the same. So my foci is going to be at 3, comma. One of the foci is going to be a little lower than the center. So negative 5 was the center value of my y, and a little lower means it's the minus 2 root 5 c value. That's one of my foci. The other foci is still going to be at 3. The x value is not changing because the major axis is the y axis, and it's going to be a little higher than the center. So the center was negative 5, and higher means that I'm doing plus 2 root 5. So there's our foci. So let's go ahead and sketch this. I know my center is at 3, negative 5. And I know that my minor axis, the x axis, the square root of 16, because that's the number underneath x, that tells me how many left and right to go. So from the center, left 4. And from the center, right 4 to get those ones. Then underneath y is 36, that tells me up and down, so I square root 36 and I go 6 up and 6 down, and then I try to sketch it as good as I can to look like an ellipse. One more thing to answer, vertices. And we could have answered it before, but I like to just sketch it to find my vertices. Remember, vertices are on the major axes. So again, that 3 value is not going to change. Let's see, I end up at 3, positive 1 for the 1 up high, and I end up at 3, negative 11 for the 1 down low. I also just could have taken the center and added 6 and subtracted 6, and you would have gotten the same thing. So there's example number 1. Okay, example number two. Find the equation in standard form of the ellipse with the following information. So we're given vertices 5, 6, 5, negative 4, and foci 5, 4, 5, negative 2. So the first thing you should have noticed in all four points there is that the 5 doesn't change. So when I'm trying to find my center, if the 5 doesn't change, that means the 5 is going to be part of my center. And that also means that the major axis is the y-axis, because the y values are the ones that are changing. So to find the other part of my center, the y value, you can look at either one, the vertices or the foci. And we know that since it's the center, it has to be the center of those y values, 6 and negative 4. To find the center of two numbers, we add and divide by 2. 6 plus negative 4 is 2, divided by 2 gives me 1. I also could have used the foci, 4 and negative 2. If I add those and divide by 2, I also get the center of being 5, 1. So let's make a sketch of this to see what's happening. So let's plot our center and then vertices and foci. So here's a little sketch of what I know so far. So again, there's your major axis because it's the one the vertices and the foci are on. So there's two distances I'm going to need to know. I'm going to need to know the distance from the center to the foci, so this distance. Since it's a sketch, I can count it out, and that's 3. You also could have subtracted from the center to get that value. I also need to know the distance from the center to the vertice, this distance. Again, I sketched it so I can count it out. That's 5. You also could have subtracted the y values from the center to the vertices to get that number. So here's a generic setup of what an equation of an ellipse looks like. I haven't plugged anything in yet, but I do know the center. So remember, when I'm going from center back to factored form, or back into the standard form, it becomes opposite. 
So the center was at 5 for the x value, so that means it's minus 5 for the equation. The center was at 1 for the y value, so that means it's minus 1 for the parentheses. I know how far it is from the center to the vertices, that vertical distance, and we know that that came from the number under y, that's our a squared, it comes from a squared. So if I go backwards and I square it, that means that y is over 25. Here's our c squared equation. I already know some of this. I know a squared, it's right under y minus 1, 5 squared is 25. I also know c, the distance from the center to the foci was 3. So if I square that, it's 9 equals 25 minus b squared. Do a little math, solve for b squared. You should up, can end up getting b squared equals 16. Notice I didn't square root it because I'm trying to put it back into the equation. And in the equation, it's over b squared. I just leave it as 16. This is the standard form of the ellipse from the given information. Okay, example number three. An architect wishes to design a large room, 100 feet long, that will be called, that will be a whispering gallery. The ceiling of the room has a cross section that is an ellipse. If the foci are to be located 32 feet to the right and left of the center, find the height, h, of the elliptical ceiling. So believe it or not, this really isn't much different from example number two. They even give us a graph and we have the same information, we just have to pull it out of the words or out of the graph. So we know the center. You can see in the graph that they chose to put the center at 0, 0. We also know the vertices. The room was 100 feet across, so that means from the center of the room, one of the walls is at negative 50, comma 0, one of the vertices. The other wall, the other vertice, is at 50, comma 0. They also told us about the foci. Right there in the picture and in the word problem, they tell you that the foci are 32 feet left and right. So negative 32, since the center is 0, left and positive 32, right. So we have the same information. Actually, we have more information than we did in problem number 2. Problem number 2, we had to find the center. On this one, we know the center. So if the center is 0, x minus 0 is just x, so x squared over something, plus the y center is 0 also, so y squared over something, ellipses always equal 1. They gave me the vertices. I know the major axis, this time is the x-axis, because that's the x values are the ones that are changing in the vertices. Since they're 50, 50 squared gives me 2,500 for a squared. It's y squared that I'm going to need to find out. So remember, c squared equals a squared minus b squared. I know a squared. It's the major axes. It's that 2,500 value. I'm looking for b squared. And since the foci are 32 to the left and to the right, 32 squared is 1,024. So do a little math to find b squared. So solving for b squared, I get 1,476, which is the number that goes under y squared. That's how many up and down from the center you would go, the square root of that. But we need to be careful because the question didn't ask for the equation. I did that to help us practice. The question wants to know the height of the ceiling, h. Well, h is whatever the square root of 1476 is above 0. So square root that and find out where h is. Square rooting that, I got 38.4187 feet. I always do four decimal places, so I know my third decimal place is correct. The ceiling is at 38.4187 feet high. In case you didn't know what a whispering room was, if I was in this room, remember this room is 100 feet across, it's pretty big. If I was standing at this foci, and you were in the room standing at that foci, and you just whispered something to me, I'd be able to hear what you said.
That's one of the properties of ellipses, and that's what a whispering room is. That's section 9.2.